Good day for our friends. Something a little bit different. I say a little bit different in as much as it is not a guitar I'm working on, but it is a neck. And a little bit of a story with this one, which I'll tell you in a minute. But recently, very strange, how uh, these things happen at once. I've had two people post necks to me with necks needing work. Uh, one I've got, uh, there's three necks, one lad sent me. Three guitars is building, he's bought three necks, one Warmoth and two Musicraft ones from America. These necks have cost £300 each and none of them are right. In fact, the Musicraft ones are... I'm appalled by the state of the frets on these Musicraft ones. One of them has eight high frets and the other has 11 high frets. These are £300 necks. But anyway, I said no, I said listen, I shouldn't work on them. And what, the idea was he was going to send the necks to me. I'm going to sort the necks out, level what frets need leveling, and I'm going to put new nuts on there, or what nuts on there, I'm going to fit the necks to my own guitar bodies, and I'm going to do a setup here, then ship him the necks back. Um, that way he saves postage on, he hasn't had to ship three guitars to me, he's just shipped three necks. But anyway, didn't know how bad those necks were, they are really bad. But moving on from those, oh, there's another one here. Again, a great neck. Warmoth, license fender, Warmoth, blah, 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 blah. There you go, it's a serial number on there. Beautiful looking thing. Now what, I, oh, I mean look at that wood. Now one thing I didn't know about this guitar, and one thing the owner failed to mention was, these are stainless steel frets. But anyway, he'd seen my work, he'd, he'd sent this to a luthier who had a set up and he couldn't get the neck right. He says, no, your neck's bent, blah, blah, blah. We'll never get that right, blah, 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 blah. So he says, could I send it to you? Could you have a look at it? I said, yeah, send it to me. We'll see where we are. Now anyway, the neck is not bent. Right, the frets are even. The neck, I say the neck's not bent, the neck is not perfectly straight, but not many are. I've never had a neck perfectly straight. They aren't always perfectly straight. Normally, you go as straight as you can, but you do undulate slightly, only a very, very tiny bit. We're talking an oomph of a millimetre. We're not talking a lot at all. So what I always do, and what I always like to point out to people is, your neck or your fingerboard is not the playing surface. The playing surface, your frets. So more important than anything, get the neck, always get the neck straight, or as straight as you possibly can. But where you must be totally straight and level is the frets. So you're playing, so if you have a bit of an undulation of 0.1 millimeters on, on, on your neck, on the wood, that's okay, because we can make up for it by leveling the frets. And it doesn't matter to, if, if a couple of frets here and there are a tiny bit lower than others, just to make that playing surface level. So, what I've done is, I've got a not straight edge, and I have a neck as straight as I can get it. And you're not gonna see from where you are, but that not straight edge, right, is, touching the wood all the way down the neck just apart from this area here and there's a slight dip and I mean a slight dip we are talking a 20th of a millimeter probably not even that paper thin but it is there but I've said to the owner what we're going to do is we're not going to straighten that because your truss rod is only going to work from this fret to your second fret your truss rod only works from this side of a heel to the first or second fret that's it this will not be touched by the truss rod. I find a lot of this a bit of a dip in this area, but we make the level up by the frets. So what I'm doing is getting the neck as straight as I can possibly get it, which is there. From where you are, you're not gonna see any difference here. We do have a little tiny gap under the frets from this area, from about fret 15, from about fret 14 to fret 17, 18, there's a tiny little dip. It is hardly measurable. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna mark which frets need work. I've already been at the, now these are stainless steel. I've never worked stainless steel before. I've always known that stainless steel is harder to work. It is that hard to work. It's very, very hard on your tools. Fortunately, I have pretty good tools. Specifically this file here. And this is a Swiss made number four cut file made by Valor. It's got two names on there. It has got Gladon or Gladon, 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 G-L-A-R-D-O-N, and Valorbe or Valorbe, Valorbe. 
V-A-L-L-O-R-B-E. Swiss made number four cut. This is such a smooth file, but it is very sharp. A little cut into the stainless. Why oh, do I know that? Because I've had a go at it with it. So, um, it's a lot harder work. I'm having to do a lot of strokes to cut a little bit of stainless with this, but I'm gonna to have to do it with this. It's the only thing I can do. I could try using a leveling beam with sandpaper on. I don't think it's gonna cut the mustard or cut the steel, so to speak. Uh, I'm quite prepared to do it all with this file and do what I can with my profiling file so I can rebuild the crown in the frets. Um, what I've decided to do is, because it's stainless steel, I'm charging the lad, I already told him, Charging you 85 pounds for a fret level, which is absolutely normal. Uh, for a fret level and reprofile, I do charge 85 pounds with a setup 100 pounds. I'm going to charge 85 pounds for that, and I'll add in one hour labor on top because it's harder to work. Chances are it's going to take me more than an hour on top, but hey ho, I'm quite happy with that. I don't want to get into the realms of charging him any more than that because you're talking a little bit stupid, aren't you? Uh, I may also, with this neck, stick it on my Telecaster body and then I can cut the nut. That's something I, I, I didn't factor into the price, but I'm quite prepared to do that. At least that way we'll know that the nut is also cut properly. So I've just emailed the guy, his name's Tom. Don't know where he lives, uh, but he did ship the neck to me. But uh, I think he's gonna be absolutely all right with everything. So, I'm gonna get this neck as straight as I possibly can. It is now anyway. So if we just tweak it a little bit more, get a little bit straighter. And uh, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna go across with a fret rocker. We're going to check all of the frets. I'm going to mark down the frets which are going to need levelling. Uh, and certainly all of them are going to need uh, reprofiling because no matter what, when I'm levelling these frets, I'm going to put scratches in the top of all of them. And those scratches are going to have to be removed. So if I'm removing scratches, I've got to reprofile the frets. By reprofile, I mean where some have flattened them on the top, we're going to have to reprofile. And we're going to have to polish out all of the scratches we're putting in there. So, without further ado, I'll stop the camera for a minute. And... Um, I'll get the neck straight as I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera. I'm going to put it over here so you can see me working. Um, probably means I'm going to have to set the guitar up another way. I didn't want to have to remove these tuners, but it looks like I might have to. Goto tuners, by the way. Goto, are these Goto GC301s or something? Certainly look that kind of type. Anyway, I love Goto tuners. I love anything Japanese, really. But anyway, I'm going to do what I said. I'll be back with an update shortly. Okay, so I'm going to try and show the problem as I see it. And the frets in themselves are not as bad as I initially thought. So there aren't as many high frets as I thought there were, but they are in an area where I thought they wouldn't be, which is really quite strange. But I'm going to show the problem we have with the neck, or I'm going to try and show the problem we have with the neck. I've got a wide angle lens on the camera, so I'm hoping everything's in nice focus. We have a 25 half inch scale length notch straight edge and the notches go over the frets so we just have this resting on the wood or on the neck and I'll take my glasses off and I'm just going to try and show that we have the neck pretty straight now the end of a notch straight edge is touching there and it's touching there but there is a slight gap this area more than here I am still not as straight as I want to be so I'm going to take a 4 mil truss rod at all to give it I'm going to, that's about one thirty tooth or a thirty second of a full turn just to try and straighten out that neck and that is what I would call straight probably gone a little bit too much or maybe a 64th would have been nice I'm going to come back just a hair the reason I've done that is I don't want a gap at this end this end, this last part is touching wood and this is touching wood. I'm going to show that and I'm going to take my thinnest feeler gauge, 0.5 millimetres, and I'm just going to try and slide it under this first fret and it's not having it and it's not having it there. See, it knocks it over. So it is not having it. So we cannot get 0.5 or a 20th of a millimetre underneath at this end. I'm going to take it to this side and I'm going to try and get it under this end. And it's also not going to go under there. But the problem is this area. And now watch, 1 20th of a millimetre. And watch, it's going to go right underneath. Only just, can you hear it? It's rocking that. 
but we do have that gap in this area and that is where we have a little tiny dip just at this end and by our rights we shouldn't have that because his net should have been radius straight before the frets went in so I don't know why that is but the thing is we don't have it we don't have it here let me just show that is not going to go underneath but it is there no doubt in there it goes right underneath look see in there poking out the other side when you get to here it doesn't go under so the problem is not really the frets the neck does have a slight dip in this area now what I'm going to do is like I've mentioned before the plane surface is actually the frets not the fingerboard so I'm going to ignore that little dip there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be leveling the frets and we're just going to stick that there and most frets oddly are more or less level along the whole length of the neck barring some I've already marked off I'm going to take a fret rocker put my glasses back on we know how this works four different lengths precision cut this is laser cut milled perfectly smooth this is the expensive version from GW in Portugal I've had this a few years now and I'm going to check the level of the frets and so far so good always doing three at a time there's the first one and let's mark that one more or less all the way across so we have one next one Again, all the way across. Two. Next one. Three, just over halfway across. Next one. So that's very high there. So both sides this way to halfway. And this end just this area. That is four high frets. Next one's good. very very slight just right on the edge it's still a high spot five six this one just not on the edges but right in the middle so we have six the problem with a job like this is very hard to price a job like this up because I would be charging 85 quid for a fret level but not the whole neck wants doing but we have got six normally over five and I say look we're just going to do the whole lot now with these being these frets being stainless steel I'm very reluctant to do the whole lot and have to reprofile the whole lot because I'm going to have to charge a lot more but it looks like that is what I'm going to have to do but I think from here onwards we're pretty much fine which is a bit strange because this is where we've got the undulation or the dip in the wood yet the frets are level so I understand what the guy, he took it to another luthier and the luthier says yeah it dips at this end it does dip at this end but not all the way it corrects itself by the time it gets to here so again a very difficult job to um, explain uh, to spot the other guy, the other luthier, was right by saying, yeah, it does dip down at the end, but it, dip, it comes back up again when you get to these last two frets. So what we do is, instead of pulling the frets out and sorting this wood out, we're not going to do that. We're going to level the frets. Oh, by the way, there's one more fret here.
so that is seven frets so what I'm going to do is the problem with this is I'm going to have to do the lot I can't just do seven and leave the others because if I start filing one once I remove material from this one it's going to alter the relationship between with them two and the, these two so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to spot level but I'm going to level flat I have one flat surface here and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go this way now the thing is with going this way and filing this like so is I'm not just hitting one fret I'm hitting those frets around it as well and we're going to put scratches in there they've got to be polished out because I need to use these frets which are level as the level and once I stop getting resistance like I'm getting resistance and once I stop getting resistance I know I've hit that level but I cannot avoid putting scratches into those frets next to this one this one's scratched up this one's scratched up this one's scratched up now so they've all got to be highly polished and it's the way I'm going to have to do it so it's going to be very difficult to price this up I'm going to keep tabs on the amount of time I put in on this I've already given the guy a quote and it's it might seem a little bit excessive a little bit expensive but you know I've charged for a full fret level 85 quid plus one hour extra now that one is level there just going to make sure stainless steel never worked stainless steel before I think it's only because I've got such good files that that is working if I didn't have that file there I'd be really really struggling so what we're going to do is while we have the camera there I've just worked this one fret I'm going to take a little piece of tape because I've leveled that one and I'm going to see how this actually is working so what I'm going to do is take a piece of tape here and it's the second one I believe I'm just going to tape it up it doesn't matter if I'm overlapping the fret because I'm not working the frets next door just working this one and now you see I've put a flat spot or I've flattened this edge of this fret can I show you just there this one here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three edge file I'm going to recrown it just by and I don't know if this file is going to work oh it seems okay wow this stuff is so hard I'm just going to recrown this fret so what I'm doing rolling the file over to build that crown back up you actually see it from an angle I've never filmed before and what I'll do is let me show you here I'm going to file that way and uh, on the far side of it I'm going to curve the file in that way and on this side I'm going to curve it that way just to start rebuilding that crown and I only need to do this side this edge but that is pretty much that is not as difficult to work as I thought it might be you know that's a beautiful crown and once I've done that I'm then going to take my profiling file already as an arc cut in and this is going to do this is going to even it all up and now I'm going to check the fret again remove the tape I'm going to check the fret again that's fine I'm going to check one back and that's perfect so I've already done that one so that was not disastrous that is beautifully crowned it's beautifully leveled I may get away with doing it all like this uh, but like I say when it comes to polishing I've got to polish all of these now so let's move to the next one I wasn't it wasn't my intention to keep the camera running on these but you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna absolutely do that so where is my marker pen? Here's my marker pen. I've got one fret here. Needs this much work doing. Let's see if I can do it. And I might just keep the camera running. So we have there and there. Because the quicker I do this, the less I'm going to charge. So. Flat side of the file. Let's just check where we are. That's the file I'm using. We'll just check again. So one centimeter in and five millimeters in. So quite a lot of the fret, this much of the fret, and that much on that one. These ones you see more or less full frets there. So let's just work on this area. Now see my dilemma. I'm filing this fret, but the other ones are acting as guides. 
and I'm going to be scratching all of them. I can't avoid that. And just got to go across. It is a lot more work. But you know what? It is not as difficult as I expected it to be. I would imagine doing a complete refret in stainless is going to take a lot more work. I'll be charging an extra couple of hours for something like that. But you see some filings there. It has worked. You don't remove as much material as you probably want to, but it is not impossible. I do understand that it is more work, it is more difficult, but let's just have a look where we are with that. It's this one I've just done, isn't it? Aha. Still a little bit high. So I'm going to keep going. While I'm getting resistance, I know I'm levelling. But I'm sure you can appreciate I'm scratching all of the frets up around these two. But let us... Let's check where we are. So this is the one I've just levelled a lot. You know, they don't feel too bad. So they are scratched up. Just get my looking glass. And I can see there's a lot of scratching on there. Right, oh, okay, that is now level. That is now level. So I have four left to do. So I've done three. It is not major work, is it? As mentioned though, they've got to be recrowned, they've got to be polished, so I think I know where I'm going to be price-wise. I'm going to wait till Tom gets back to me anyway. Um, but regardless of whatever price we agree on, I have already started the work. I am going to complete the work regardless of anything else. And I'm sure we'll come to a, uh, an agreement on the price. End of the day, you pay me for my time. You're not paying for anything else. Well, you pay obviously pay for my, for my expertise, but you're paying for my time. And I do have a hourly rate of £30. I don't always adhere to that. For instance, normally when I'm doing a job, I have a price for a job. For instance, a refresh starts at £175. Uh, depending on what else you want with the refret, it's probably going to go up a little. So, it's marking up all these frets that need work. Stainless steel fret wire. Yes, okay. If I was doing the whole lot and levelling a lot and recrowning a lot, yeah, I'd be looking at a lot more you know, it's going to be in the high bracket, it's going to be expensive. But I'm working, I've only worked seven frets. It's part of my job is to, you know, you pitch a price. You don't want to rip yourself off. You want to actually be earning money you deserve to earn. Uh, but you don't want to be charging a stupid amount of money uh, that is going to really put people off. You don't want to put them in a position where they need the work doing that you've got to pay this much. I don't agree that you should you spend £300 on a neck when you have to go and spend another £130 getting the neck sorted out. That's something you should really take up with the manufacturer or the seller of the neck. Um, end of the day, it is my job to get this neck playable. And you know me, I'm all about necks and frets. Uh, one good thing though is the playing surface is the fret. So if we can get the frets, the neck as straight as possible and the frets all level, you have a playable neck. Uh, and that for me is the most important thing. Um, so anyway, I'm going to send this video over to Tom, see what he says. I'm sure he's going to okay everything. And off camera, I'm going to do the rest of the work. And when it comes to polishing, I will come back and show you exactly how I go about that. Okay, guys, with the camera in a somewhat precarious position, uh, you don't really need to know anything about that. I have the neck with the frets levelled. And it was a little bit more difficult than I first envisaged because... As much as I wanted to just level them all with a flat file, 
go across it cause more problems because obviously if I remove material from this one it's going to alter the relationship between these two each side and also say for instance I alter this one it's going to alter the relationship between these two so the more I was filing from here the more I was having to work on frets around them so I decided in the end just to go across with my leveling beam which is a piece of two inch by one inch boxed uh, steel box section with two milled flat edges one there one there this has 240 grit paper on that side, 400 on that side, but 400 wasn't doing anything so I ended up going over with the foot boot 240 grit it's just a matter of levelling all the frets, so I've had to do the whole lot and I'm just going to show that we now have them level, you'll know anyway because you should be able to see flat spots on all of these frets, especially one like this one at the end here it's got a flat. so I'm going to have to recrown the whole lot of these frets now so it's going to be more work when I first envisaged I'm still quite happy with the price I've charged, I've talked to the owner, he's got back to me I sent him a, um, an appraisal video it just means I've got a lot more work to do on these frets to get them right so it's going to be a matter of again, taping up the frets this is probably going to be the most difficult one at the end because this is one of the flattest it's probably the flattest fret this one let's just get some paper on there and uh, you know and it is really some heavy duty frets these are they need quite a bit of work so it's a matter of just taking this file and again straight across the top and I'm going to show you now that we have a flat top fret let me just show you there can you now see that this fret is completely flat across the top there and I'm going to rebuild that crown or rebuild that area going lengthways across the fret and that is just a matter of and this file is really doing some work and I'm just going to keep it straight-ish at the moment and I'm going to start arcing the file over to rebuild this crown and it takes a bit of work on these uh, stainless steel frets but anyway on this side and let me show you exactly where I am and you see now down the center of that fret we're rebuilding that line let me try and show you a little bit neater because I've worked more on the side closest to you than I have on the side closest to me so again take the file and I start to arc it toward the center of the fret and again this side And now I think you can see where I'm now rebuilding that crown. Can you see that nice thin blue line down the centre of that fret? And once I've got that, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take the profiling file and I'm going to even out that arc. And it's taking more work than we normally do, but that's okay. And there, you're going to see I have a nice thin line right down the centre of that fret. Just need to tidy up. And there, just give us that nice D shape. And I'm hoping you're getting to see where that is there. And that is a lot better. Just this little edge. Now. And you see I'm having to work these frets quite a lot more than I normally would but that is now beautifully recrowned. I have 20 odd more to do. Um, I will be taping up the whole of the fingerboard. Uh, let me just show where we are. Let me get this tape off now. I haven't shown you the frets level have I? So let's get this on camera because these being stainless steel frets we need these. Well any frets we just need them perfectly level. So we're going to take the fret rocker and we're going to go across all of the frets just to show that they are level and I'll just remind you that I know I've said this a few times before and you probably know but the playing surface of any guitar is the top of the frets not the fingerboard so even though we have a bit of an undulating fingerboard which again shouldn't happen we should not have that the fact remains that we do and no neck is 100% straight we get them clo very close to 100% straight but I've never had a neck that is perfectly straight across the whole length so what we do is we take an average we get it as level as we can 
and then the proper level comes by leveling the frets. You want to have a neck as straight as we possibly can. Almost always, by the way, if you're ever going out to buy a guitar, check the neck. Check the neck straight, check the amount of relief in the neck. If you can, take a truss rod tool and just check that the truss rod is working, that it turns one way or another and the neck either bends that way or bends that way and you can get it straight. Always, always try and do that when you're buying a guitar because, like I say, a neck is the most important part of a guitar because if the neck's right, the guitar has a potential to be an absolute world beater. But if the neck is not right, specifically the frets as well, your, your guitar will never play right if the neck is not right. So remember that. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get it all taped up, and I'm going to basically, I'm going to um, profile or recrown all of these frets. It's going to take me a while. I'm going to get it all taped up and I will come back and show you a little bit more in a short while. Just before I do tape up this neck ready for crowding the frets, I just want to show this. This is for the benefit of the owner of this neck or owner of the guitar. And just to show that we have the frets properly level. First, what we're going to do is we're going to stick the not straight edge back on the guitar and we're going to show we still have this. I know it's a little bit annoying, but we still have this. 1 20th of a millimetre gap but this is like I say it's all about the frets so what we're going to do is we're going to slightly move this not straight edge just forward and rest it on the top of the frets and you see we're not looking just for the not straight edge to lay it flat across the frets just in the centre which they do they're all on the frets all the frets will be touched we also need the same thing at the edge of the guitar. Now we don't follow the edge of the guitar, we'll follow a straight line from a knot because that's where the radius works. The radius still works over the edges of, at this end. So we're going to, we're not going to bring it to there, we're going to leave it inside and keep it straight. And again, the not straight edge is touching all of the frets and if I bring it to this side, the not straight edge or these bits that stick down, the flat parts, are all touching the frets. It just shows that we have got a perfect level across all of the frets. So now it remains, what's, what, what I have to do now is crown all the frets again. I just want to show you a little gadget I have as well. This is a piece of masking tape and it, this creates a bridge over the knot. So when I'm levelling frets with a levelling beam, we're not, normally I have to remove the knot to level frets, but in this case I didn't want to because it's too much to get it all back. It's a lot of work and you normally end up replacing the knot. So how you do this, and as we come up, we don't hit the knot, we glide over the top of the tape. And that way we're still levelling all of the frets, but we don't have to remove the knot. Just a little tip I want to show for any budding um, guitar techs out there that want to do that and don't want to remove the knot. Because removing that knot, you normally have to saw it down the middle, crush it in on itself and remove it, clear it and replace it. And I charge £50 for replacing a knot in, 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 in an instance like this. So anyway, I'm going to get my tape out. Uh, various sizes of masking tape. I'll be using three different sizes. I'll show what they are. And I have a 6mm wide, 6mm, 19mm, 25mm, and I'll be taping up between the frets just so I can get in there without marking the fingerboard. I'm going to do it off camera and I will come back and show you that once it is done. I'm going to be moving the camera to another angle so I can show you how exactly I am going to recram these frets. You'll see the actual job in action. It's going to take me quite a bit longer than it normally does. I normally do a complete fret level recrown and polish in four hours, maybe sometimes five hours. I imagine there's going to be six hours going into this one, so the quicker I get on with it, the quicker I will get it done. While I'm here, I may as well show you how I tape up a fingerboard ready for fret work and I always put a line of tape right down the side it makes it easier to remove uh, the tape that we put in between the frets later and uh, normally we get a bit of an overlap so one two three four five we've got a couple of overlaps there when we get an overlap I just take some tape rip it down the middle and we'll just up and over with that like so, and down the middle, and this way we're just going to leave the frets exposed. And the reason I do this is, if I do slip with a file, I'm not going to mark the fingerboard. Uh, we don't want to be marking fingerboards, we want to keep them pristine. 
I don't think some people realise how much work actually goes into the fret level. It's not something you can do. Some people tell me I can do that in two hours. Well, well I've had them on my Facebook, on my YouTube page. I can do that in two hours and I only charge £45. And I say, yeah, but I do it right. You know, and that's always my argument. I'm not concerned about how quick someone says they can do it. Listen, if you're doing a complete fret level, recrown and polish in two hours, then you're either on speed or, or something because you can't do it in that amount of time. Especially on this, it's stainless steel. You know, do a job right, you've got to take your time. It's why I never get anything come back. Because I do do things right. Anyway, getting back to where we were. When you get to ones where the tape's too wide, rip it down the middle, inside on one edge, like so, and overlap. Are you getting this? How wonderful is that? I'm now going to move on to the thinner tape. That's the one inch stuff. Move on to the 20mm stuff. And when we get to this end, probably I'll show you now. When we get to this end, we're going to be using the 6mm stuff. Now you must always make sure that your neck is absolutely level before you put the tape on because you can't check the level again. Now I've checked a few times. But anyway, get into this end of the guitar and Really quite self-explanatory all this. When you get to this end, like so, you're there. And again, very simple, but keep it clean. I know the reason I'm filming these little parts of the video is I know the owner of this guitar is a, he loves, he takes great pride in his guitars and he likes everything done properly. And I know in an ideal situation, he would not have this neck with this little dip down here. He would be returning it or whatever. But sometimes it's just not possible to do that for whatever reason. But he does agree that the playing surface is the frets. You know, and even with warmers, and this is not against warmers, right? But even with warmers, it is still very, very difficult to get a completely straight neck. It very, very rarely works to see one completely straight. Uh, I could always find a little dip somewhere. But like I said, this is why I am fret friend, because to me it's all about the frets. Not just about the frets, obviously it's about the neck. Anyway, when it comes to doing these at this end, I'll probably just do four or five of this 6mm tape. This is very, very, actually very therapeutic doing this, because you're not attacking anything with a file and you're not working vigorously. Now my job is, there's a lot more time goes into this than you actually would believe. You know, there's a lot of prep work. I also don't charge for research. I do a lot of research. Virtually everything I have learnt, I'm self-taught when it comes to being a guitar tech, but virtually everything I've learned is, I have books, I've, I've most of Dan Irwin's books, but it's been, if I ever needed to know anything, I've just gone onto YouTube and I, I check web pages and I belong to so many luthier guitar tech pages and if I ever do get stuck I've always got a book to refer to or I go and see someone else's methods and I've watched virtually every method of guitar fret leveling and refretting there is and I've honed my skills taking various bits from different people you know and you're, you're always honing your skills I'm still learning things today and I've been refretting guitars I've been doing it for years you know, but you're always learning new ways and you're always looking for better ways and ways to improve the way you do things and to keep yourself, keep your work cost effective, but we are still able to make a living. Like this, for instance, this is going to take me six hours. You know, I'm not charging a lot of money for six hours work. Uh, but then again, I'm not money driven, but obviously I do have bills to pay, you know, and I can't be doing this for nothing. And I always look at what my competitors are charging. I've only recently put my refretting prices up to £175 for a refret. And that is before anything like we, we start to work around um, nibs or binding or anything. It's at 175 flat rate. That does not include the new nut. That does not include the fret wire. That does not include the strings. So you're looking for a refret nowadays. You're looking at about £200 with a new nut. I don't charge for fitting a new nut. It's included in the price if it's needed. Um, you know, and again, a refret anything from 12 to 20 hours depending on the work but obviously if I'm going to be refretting with stainless steel I'm going to be charging 50 quid more so there are various ways for it to go a little bit but end of the day you've got to be you know you've got to be cost effective but not just cost effective you've got to be able to make a living from it and, and not 
put yourself out of commission. It's like, for instance, I've just refretted a Hamer Chaparral from 1986, and it's taken its ad over 30 hours, and I've charged £300. In fact, I've not charged £300 at all. I've charged £200 uh, plus the parts, plus I, I took it as part payment a Floyd Rose tremolo system uh, from uh, the early 80s, which to me is probably worth £100. So I've roughly got about £30, uh, £300 for that whole job. But anyway, there we go. You can see how it works now. Just got these few to do. No need to see everything now. I'll show one more because this paper, we're now moving to the thinner stuff. And you want to be ripping this nice thin piece for up at this end. Keep it clean. And a thicker piece for this end. And you get to see how it works. And I'll do the same again. Thin piece for up at this end. Thicker piece at this end. And you see how it's working now. Like so. We're going to use a full strip there, full strip there. And that's done that thinner bit. Just take a full strip here. So we're always we're saving paper by not using full strips on each one. And so you get to see how it works now. And once we get to the ones where the tape's too wide for one fret, we'll just rip it in half again. Straight down the middle. And like this. So, it's going to take me another couple of minutes to get all this done. Once it's done, I'm going to move the camera. We're going to start recrowning these frets. It's going to take me quite a while to recrown these frets because this stainless steel fret wire is really hard. But you see how we go in there. You see how it's working now. So, I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to get my station set up ready for recrowding all of these frets, get the rest of the tape on, and I'll be back very soon. So, I've set up my station and I've come a little bit closer into the camera. I've moved the camera, and that's about as close as I want to zoom in because uh, otherwise we're going to lose focus. I'm going to be looking at these frets, and we're going to be recrowning these frets. By recrowning, it means where we've flattened them across the top this way. We're going to rebuild that crown in there and it's going to take quite a lot of work and I'm using three different files for this because we're using stainless steel and what we always must do is wipe the files and keep them clean. Same with this one, the profiling file. I've already explained what a different file does but for this job I'm bringing out a third file and this one doesn't come out much and this was a gift from a good friend of mine, a top top luthier in England, his name is Nigel Roberts. He has known as leicestershireluthier.co.uk or leicestershire-luthier.co.uk. I've learned so much from that man. He is an amazing man. Uh, what he doesn't know you could, about guitars is you could probably write on the head of a pin and still have room for the Lord's Prayer. The guy's amazing. And he gifted me this file. And this, again, is a profiling file, but this is a diamond encrusted one. It's called a diamond file. And this will cut stainless. And it will reshape stainless. And it works pretty much the same as this profiling file except this will cut much better and I'm going to use this, I don't really use it on stainless steel and this kind of file you must wipe after every use, you give a dry wipe a wet wipe then one more dry wipe after every fret and you'll see there's always residue from that and this will recrown any fret and we're just going to, because I've already done this first one I'm going to reprofile with this and I do believe that this is a 300 grit one, not the 150 grit, which is a bit more coarse. And this will give a nice smooth cut and rebuild that profile beautifully. And that should be as smooth as anything. It hardly needs polishing. And what we'll always do on every fret is we again check the level, just to make sure we've not removed height. We're going to remove material from the side. And that is the case with this one. So, give this a wipe. And there you go, see that? Then we're going to give it a wet wipe. And then I'm going to dry wipe again. And there you go, always after every single fret, do this one wipe. So I'm going to do a fret. I'm going to slightly move my chair. We're going to take the pen. This one's done, the first one. Pen across the top. I'm not going to do too many of these. I normally do two or three on camera. 
to show you how I'm going, but as these are going to need so much more work, probably not going to show that many. So what I always like to do is steady the neck, or steady the neck and the file. You see, I'm using this middle finger here just to steady the file on this edge. These are these, these do have safe edges, ground smooth, not flat, smooth. So I can place a finger there just so I don't slip and zoot across all the frets and scratch them up. So very easily with my finger just resting on the edge of the file, keep the fret, keep the file straight. And as I'm on the far side of the fret, I'm going to slightly angle the file toward the camera, like so. Now I'm going to come this side. I'm going to angle file away from the camera. And now you see I'm going to show you that beautiful thin blue line down the centre of the fret. Can you see it? I know you can see it. And once that's done we've now where it was once flat we've rebuilt that crown. We're going to take the profiling file and we're going to remove any burrs or any inconsistencies in my filing by hand. Again, very, very thin line down the center. And then we're gonna come back in with the diamond file. And we're just gonna smooth it all off. And that is another fret done. So you see, how it's done, you see how it's going to take quite a while to get all these done. Um, totally normal. And we're going to check that fret, check there's no inconsistency. We have lost no height at all. It's still level and we're going to move one back. And there you go. I'm going to do one more. Just to show I, I, I always check one forward, one back. See the thickness of the pen on that fret there. Clean the file. Again, far side, so steady the neck, steady the file, keep the file straight. Then because we're on the far side of the fret, we're gonna arc the file toward the neck or toward the camera and start to rebuild that crown. Try to keep my hand out of the way and keep your finger there so the file, if it does slip, we're not gonna scoot across anything. And working this side, again, we're gonna angle the file away from the camera Rebuild the crown on the near side toward the as you're looking from the camera. We're going to show that thin blue line down the centre there. Again, back in with the profiling file, give it a wipe, but keep it clean. Blow away all the rubbish. And just remove any inconsistencies or any birds we might have. Wipe again, out of the way. Take the diamond file, one dry wipe, there you go. A little bit of spit, one wet wipe. And again, one dry wipe, over to the fret. And this is how I work. This is how I do press. This is the first time I've ever worked stainless steel. Yes, it is more difficult than regular nickel silver fret wire. Yes, it is more difficult than the Jeskar Gold Evo or the Evo Gold fret wire, but it is not impossible. You do need good tools. Fortunately, I have good tools. Uh, one good thing, never ever skimp on quality of tools if you're gonna be a guitar tech or a luthier, uh, because you know what? You'll only end up buying once if you buy good tools. If you buy rubbish tools, you'll end up buying many times. So there we go, that is three done. Uh, just gonna show, the one I've done just done is that one, super smooth. But what we do is we check that fret with the ones around it. It's perfectly flat. We check one back, still perfectly level, and we check one forwards, still perfectly level. So keeping that blue line down the center, we've maintained the height, knowing that all of the frets are level. We've maintained the height, we've just rebuilt that crown. And that, my friends, is how you re-crown frets. Welcome to some time later, and you'll notice there are dots all down the length of the neck behind each fret, and that is because every time I do a fret and I've finished it, I put a dot behind it, then mark up the next one ready for leveling, and that way I always know where I am. So all of these frets 
have been recrowned. We're now ready to go into the polishing stage. So I'm just going to check the frets on camera. Just check we've got no rock anywhere. And we, I guarantee that we have no rock anywhere. And this is what we want to see. And this is what it's all about, getting these frets level. Now what I'm going to do is, I didn't mention this before, I'm going to stick this net, I'm going to strip my own Telecaster. I have a, it's what I call a fast FAST, it's a Fender American, not my own Stratocaster, my Telecaster. Fender American Standard Telecaster, FAST. I have a 2008 model, it's my favourite guitar, it has upgrades. I put a four-way switch in there, I upgraded the pots to 300k pots. And I have a push pull on the bridge. In the bridge pickup area, I put a little 59 humbucker, small size. And it's just an amazing guitar. But what I'm going to do is, because I'm working on four guitar necks that belong to other people and other people's guitars, I'm going to fit each neck to my Telecaster body just so I can set up the neck properly and get the nut cut. Um, I'll be setting each nut up and cutting the grooves, cutting the slots. Uh, to just above the fret because we've, remo re we've removed material from the top of the frets means now the cut is not the nut is cut wrong. We need to cut these nut slots again to make them perfect for this neck. So I'll be doing it on all four of those necks, this one included. But next thing I'm going to do is we're going to move over to the other bench. We're going to take six different grits of sandpaper, going through 600 grit through to 2000. And we're going to polish these frets and we're going to remove all those scratches and bring them up to a nice shine. Once that is done, this neck will be more or less finished. I will treat the fingerboard because it's rosewood with some mineral oil uh, just to clean up that and uh, treat it as well. And then I'll do exactly what I said, put this neck on my telly and we'll get it set up and we'll check these nut slots. Then it will all be ready for going back to its owner. So I've just found a note I was sent with this guitar, just fell out of the tube it, the neck was sent in. I've not read it before, and it explains on here that uh, uh, the neck is stainless steel frets and a compound radius. I didn't even know that when I was levelling the frets. The thing is, I level the frets with a level beam anyway, and now when you do that, you do it slightly different. You do follow the lines of the neck like so. So I've already done that, and everything has been re-radiused. So we are all fine and dandy there, and I'm just going to check. But normally a compound radius should go something like probably a 10 at this end, 16 at this end. So we're going to have a little look, and here's a 16 inch radius gauge. And indeed, it is 16 inches at this end. Let's have a look at the other end, and I would imagine it's going to be somewhere around about 10. That's normally right. So let's have a look there. And there you go, and maybe it is 12. 12, 16 seems about right. 10, 16, 12, 16. I'm thinking this is going to be about 12 at this end. And we'll be pretty much bang on there. So we're going for a 12, 16 compound radius. Anyway, moving on. And if it's not for 10, 16, it makes no difference now. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we are going to be polishing the frets. And like I say, four different grits of paper 600, 800. 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 and 2,000. Start with the most coarse grit, really easy. What we're going to do is we're just going to go over the tops of the frets, come inside and that is as difficult as it, it is going to be. Sometimes a good idea just to wet your finger so you can hold the paper and it doesn't slip. And that's it. And we're going to go across the top, get into the corners, and again, this is going to take me a while, because once I've done all this, I'm probably going to finish off using polishing rubbers and some steel wool at the end. So, a couple of hours or so in this. So I'm going to crack on, go through the grips, get these frets all polished up, and uh, can then get the neck fitted to my body. Get the guitar set up, get the nut slot, and that'll be it. And here we are, all done. Been through with six different grits of paper. I did finish off with steel wool in the end because I don't mind doing that on a guitar where we've not got the neck fixed to the body. We're not going to get any filings in 
to the pickup area. So that's great. So the uh, sandpaper is spent. The frets are looking fantastic. Uh, I'm going to peel off the tape, move the camera again. Once I've got the tape peeled off and all the fingerboard, I will show you the frets in more detail. This is the best part of polishing frets, and that is getting to peel the tape off. And this is why I put a strip of tape on because when you do that, you can just rip them all off from underneath in one go. Look, how much easier is that? And there will be some tricky parts, but just watch. Take this strip that we put underneath and just peel that back. And there you go. And you just look at that. How much easier is that? You know, a lot, lot better. Same again. That's why I'm doing about six inch strips. And you can just clear everything up so easily, so quickly. And again, from this side. And you can just peel all the way down if you get the right way and get a decent overlap you can peel it all off in one big go and there you go and that is all of the tape quickly and easily removed there's the frets all leveled recrowned and polished and don't they look fantastic i am going to treat the uh, fingerboard with some Mineral oil, you know it's lemon oil. It's mineral oil, specially formulated for rosewood, parfero, uh, ebony, whatever. And we're just going to spray the neck like so. And I'm just going to let that soak in and sink in for 10, 15 minutes. And that's going to nourish the wood. It's also going to raise up any of the grime and sweat and dead skin under there. I can also use it on the sides here just to remove any of that tape residue. It's not going to daub the lacquer, don't worry about anything like that. And there you go, any tape residue that was on there is now gone. And now you get to see how wonderful this neck is. What a beautiful looking neck. And it's, I've still got this string tree off because I wanted to alter the truss rod when the neck is back on the guitar. I will be sticking this, this didn't come with the guitar, this just came in a tube on its own. I'm going to stick this on my own Telecaster just so I can test to check the nut slots, make sure they are deep enough. If not, chances are I'm going to have to deepen these nut slots just a little to get the action right. But I'm going to let this oil soak in 15 minutes and I can move on to that next part. I'll probably even do that tomorrow morning. I've got a pool match tonight. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not playing a match tonight. I'm signing up for a new team tonight. So I'm going to be finishing in here about 5.30. Uh, I've got another deck, uh, another load of frets I need to polish on another guitar. So this one's going to be put off till tomorrow morning. And I will come back and do that. And I'll show a little bit more of what we are what we are doing. Chances are I will show this going onto my own Telecaster body, and uh, we'll just do a setup with some old strings just to get those nut slots right, or to at least check that they're close. And once that's done, we can take the neck off again. We can clean it or get it back in its tube and post it back to its owner. Check back in the morning. With the neck finished, I'm removing the neck from my own. Telecaster, I have a Fender American Standard Tele 2008 model here, my favourite guitar with upgrades. I'm going to remove the neck, keeping the same strings on, uh, just so I can cut the knot on the warmth neck. Uh, I'm just going to whiz these out. Should have maybe done this off camera. But it's just to show that it's all being done more or less live. Old set of strings now, I think the 1046s, which is going to be fine for setting up the warmth neck. I am using this guitar as a donor body next week on three necks I'm working on anyway. So I had to dismantle it. I now do not have any of my own players in Well, I do have a player, it's an Explorer. And I um, don't really play that much metal anymore nowadays. I don't really play in church. But anyway, get his neck off. I'm going to hope that the neck, the one will just fit straight on here. Should do. Neck plate off. My neck out of the way. Screwdriver out of the way. So that's my neck. 2008 serial number, Z8. Beautiful neck. 
and uh, stick that back in its uh, back in its case. And let's see if this warmer neck fits on here. Um, I've actually got it parcelled up, ready for shipping. Uh, but I'm not shipping it this week. I just wanted to make sure I've got everything I need. Remove it with the tube. Just want to make sure that everything wraps up alright. I bought the courier for this, it'll be going out on Monday. Anyway, here it is. And we're going to see if it fits my guitar. Well, it does kind of fit my guitar, it's not very really tight. And I'm just going to hope that the neck screws fit properly. Uh, they should do. It's a telly, isn't it? Let's see where we are. I want to make sure I'm going to the holes in the neck. That fits perfectly. That's just a perfect fit, look at that. So I'm setting this neck up on my own guitar. And that way we'll have a nut slots cut right. I'm not charging for this, like I said. It's something I just thought of earlier. I thought, you know what, I could stick that on my own guitar. I think there's not slots sorted. Mm -hmm. I'll just do this in a minute. I'm also going to get to see what this neck looks like on my guitar. I do actually have a warmth neck going spare. It's a Stratocaster neck, reverse headstock Stratocaster. It is a good maple one like this. Flame maple, uh, not flame, what's the one? Not flamed, not spaltered, the other one. Anyway, whatever. So yeah, look at that. Now I, I'm not a fan of rosewood fingerboards. I, I mean, I do like rosewood fingerboards. Don't get me wrong, but not on my, um, not on my fenders. I love a maple fingerboard on a fender. So anyway, just going to set this up. There's no point in me doing this on camera right now, is there? I'm going to set this up just so I can cut the knot. It may not need altering, it may not need cutting, it may be fine as it is, I don't know, I've got no idea. But, you know. Just bring that back a little bit so you can see more. These are old strings anyway, so no big deal about having to use these again or whatever. My Telecaster deserves some more new strings. I might put some 1149s on there because I'm good. I always tune to E flat anyway. It's pushing on a bit late in the day now, it's about 5 pm. I'm going out. 6.30, I've got a pool match tonight. I'm going to pool match, but I'm going to play pool with some friends, signing up for a new team. And my son plays for this team. Uh, two of my brothers also play for the same team. And a bit of a family affair tonight. So let me do this off camera. And once this is all done, we'll come back and we'll have a look at these nut slots. So let me explain what we're doing here. We have the warm of neck on my own body there. We're going to check the action at the 12th fret, make sure we're more or less where we need to be. We don't have to be spot on, just have to be close. So anywhere around about 2 millimetres, 1.75 millimetres at the 12th fret on the low E, and we're pretty much where we need to be. And we are there, we are actually lower, we're at 1.5 millimetres. So I'm going to check the straightness of the neck. I'm going to have a little bit of relief in there. If that is around about 0.2 millimetres at the 9th fret, I will deem that to be in playing position. 
So we're going to go with 0.25, just to check. Can you hear it? And again, that's perfect. So I don't need any more or less relief than that. I could actually slightly, ever so, ever so slightly tighten up this truss rod because 0.25 is just over. So that should be enough. So what I like is to be round about 0.2 millimeters at the nine fret area. Three, five, seven, nine. And let's have a look at that. And what I want from this is, I'm going to go 0.2, 0.2 millimetres on the old feeler gauge there. If I can find it, there she is. 0.2 millimetres. And we're just touching, that is beautiful. So that is a nice action. So I'm looking at here, this end, probably 0.2 millimetres above the first fret this is, the bottom of the string above the first fret. I like about 0.2, 0.25 on this string, about 0.35, 0.4 on the sixth string. So we are high on all of these, considerably high. So I would go with my Hosco nut slot files, and this is two cuts per file, 10, 26, we'll have a 13, 36, and a 17, 46. So it's a 1046 set. We are quite high on the on the first string, so I'm going to take a corresponding file, 10, and I'm just going to slightly deepen this slot and widen. And I'm going to measure again. We are a mile high there. Keep going. Don't take too much out, take your time. If you go too deep, you'll be replacing the knot and it's gonna cost you time and money. Still high, and that's great. Slightly angling the file backwards toward the string tree there. Oh, nice and gentle and just clear it open. And we are there with that one. Next one, which will be the 13. I'm going to measure this. We're going to take a 0.25 gauge for this one. I'm going to 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0.3, 0.3, 0.35. 0 .3, 0 .3, 0 .3, Slightly higher as we come to the thicker strings. Reason being, thicker strings vibrate more. Really, it's simple. So, we're going to take the next file 13, we've got 36 one side, 13 the other. to ring so we're going to tidy that up that's fine next one will be the 17 same story 17 size file yeah, I think you're getting the hang of it now, aren't you? We've got the depth right there, first go. We are just going to tidy up that slot. I'm going to get the right file. So we've cut these three, got these three to do, got to do these off camera, get it done, we'll file over the top of a knot, clean it all up, and uh, in fact I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one now, I'm going to want 0.35 on this, and we'll do the fat one, 46 on that one, if it's a 42 that's okay, if we go with 942 string, 
like I say, take your time, don't go too deep. No need to flare this one, just to remove a little bit of height. Really, is that simple? Might as well get them all done. 36. Take the 36. Get this one. A little bit more. Very, very nearly there. And the last one, 26. 26 file. There you go, knot is caught, all done, neck is finished. Take strings back off, sand across here. Uh, just finish off, just where the edges are a little bit rough, we're gonna sand them down a little. And this neck is all finished and good to go. And there we are, friends, all done. Um, the problem came with the guy thought the neck was bent and he sent the neck to me for straightening out using heat and clamps. It's not that the neck's bent, it has a little bit of a dip at this end of the neck, which it shouldn't have, admittedly, but it has. And what I decided to do is make the level across the frets. Now this being compound radius, and stainless steel frets is a lot more work than it normally would be. So I've had to spend a little bit, bit more time on it, but we have got the frets leveled. They are all recrowned and they are polished and they are finished. And one other thing I had to do, which I didn't charge for, which I was also was never discussed, was I fitted this neck onto my own Telecaster just so I could cut the nut slots to the correct depth. Um, I took a bit of a gamble there because it is possible that when this goes on the guy's guitar, the owner's guitar, you may get maybe a little bit too low on the first fret, but I don't think that's going to be the case because I set this up with a nice low action at this end and the chances are he's probably going to have a little bit more relief and a slightly higher action at the 12th fret anyway. So it should be absolutely no fret buzz. The fret slots have been cut for a 1046 set. Um, I've slightly flared open uh, ever so slightly the slots anyway, so the strings are going to sit in there perfectly well. And that's it, the neck looks fantastic. It is as good as it is ever going to be. And if the guy be able to put up that little bit of a dip in the fingerboard there, but that said, the frets are all level with each other. So this guitar, as far as I'm concerned, is a perfect neck. Um, should have no problems with it whatsoever. And it is all ready to go back. So I'm gonna get this. I'll, I've got a little bit of a, a confession, I had actually got this parcel back up ready to go out today and I realised I've not done film the end of a video. So I've just had to take it back out of the parcel and whip it back out. But anyway, anyway, it's ready to go today. So until uh, the next project, which will not be too long in the making, I've got plenty of work in at the moment. Um, I'm going to sign off right now. So just before I do go, remind you my website, best place to catch me and find out what I do and who I am is on Facebook. So you can go to facebook.com forward slash ng17, that's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. My name is Victor, I'm your fret friend, and until the next one, God bless you, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time.